Welcome back to Kids Planning. I'm Peyton. And I'm Jerry. And today we're going to teach you how to play... Blender! Ahoy, matey! It's time to set sail on the high seas and unleash your inner pirate. It's time to plunder. Plunder is a competitive pirate-themed strategy game for two to six players from Lost Boy Entertainment who helps sponsor this video. And plunder players wage war on the high seas, fighting to build the strongest fleet, control islands, and gain valuable resources as players race to get 10 plunder points. To set up the game, build the framework on the board with the numbers on the top and bottom and the letters on the side. Then randomly put the six map tiles inside the frame. Put the compass spinners to the side for now. Then take 10 of each resource type and put them in their own stack, face up. Shuffle the rest of the resource cards together and put them face down to form the draw pile. Then shuffle and stack the treasure cards face down and put the plunder point cards in their own pile. Use the compass spinners to place three X marks the spot tokens, or four if you're playing with five or six players. So we're gonna spin the compass spinners and see where we put the X's. So the first one goes on G12, which is right here. And then we spin again for the second X. G8, eight. More thing of random numbers. G12. Then push the storm, also using the compasses. Just put the center of the storm on whatever spot you spin. The storm cannot start on the port of a one skull island. If it does, re-spin. Then everyone picks a color, takes their ships, their flags, and their reference card. Each player picks a one skull island to start from. Everyone rolls a die, and whoever rolls the highest number goes first. Then go counterclockwise around the table. After you pick an island, put your flag on it to show you own it. You can only choose from the one skull islands, so you can't pick any of these that have two or three skulls. Put your ship on your island's port. Then everyone draws three resource cards from the face down deck. Now you're ready to start the game. The last player who picked an island goes first. The goal of the game is to gain 10 plunder points. You get one plunder point for each ship you command, each island you control, and each plunder point card you have. And you can get plunder point cards by sinking other players' ships, trading resources, or from treasure cards. During the game, you have to keep your plunder cards where everyone can see them. You don't need to take a point card for your ships and islands, just add those points to your total. So if I have two ships on the map, and I control two islands, and I have three plunder cards, then I have seven points total. During your turn, you'll draw one resource card from the face down deck for each island you own, roll the round sailing die, move your ship, and perform actions. Then, end your turn when you're ready. While you're sailing, you might take over an island, battle another ship, trade with another player, or hunt for treasure. Doing these things does not end your turn. Your turn ends when your last ship sinks, you've done everything you want to do or can do, or a treasure card says you need to end your turn. Each player starts the game with one ship. You can build more ships during the game, but you can never have more than three ships in your fleet. Ships can be upgraded with cannons, masts, and life pegs. Cannons increase the damage you do during battle, and masts let you move farther during your turn. Each ship starts with three life pegs and no cannons or masts. If you lose a life during a battle, take off one peg and put it back in the box. If you lose all three life pegs, then your ship sinks and you take it off of the board. Resource cards are used for building and upgrading your ship. You can build at any time during your turn, and you can build as much as you want, as long as you have the resources. The reference card tells you what it costs to build different things. You can also trade in five gold for one plunder point card. This is called burying treasure. To build or upgrade a ship, trade in the required resources and add the upgraded parts to your ship. Ships can have up to two cannons, two masts, and three life pegs. When you build a new ship, place the ship with three life pegs in one of your ports or next to one of your ships that's already on the map. If you build a ship after you've already rolled the sailing dice, that ship can't move on that turn, but it can have interactions. During the game, you sail your ship by rolling the sailing die, which is the brown die with the white pips. The number you roll is the number of spaces you can move on your turn, and you can divide it across your whole fleet. So if I roll a five, I can use that all for one ship, or I could split it up and move one ship two spaces and another ship three spaces, and each mast lets the ship move one extra space. 
You can move ships in any order, and you can go back and forth between ships. And you can move fewer than the number you roll if you want to. You can move to any open map spaces next to you, but you can't move diagonally, and a space can only have one ship on it at a time. If you run to any kind of land, you have to go around it. So from here, I can move here or here, but I can't move here because of land, and I can't move here because of one of my other ships. But I also can't move here because it's diagonal. You can dock at islands wherever you see the port symbol, but only one ship can dock at a port at a time. If it's an island like this that has two port symbols, then one ship can dock at each port at the same time, like this. If the port is on the corner of an island, like this, then you can go in here or here, but you still can't go diagonal. If it's a port like this that's on the side of an island, then you can only go in from that side. There are a few different types of islands. Resource islands have skulls, and they let the owner draw an extra resource card at the beginning of their turn, and they can only have one owner. Martin Islands have barrels on them. Nobody can own these, but they let people trade. Islands with no markings on them and barrier islands just scan your way and make you sail around them. The barrier islands, which are these islands that are positioned between spaces, don't actually occupy a space, but you have to go around them. During the game, you're definitely going to attack some things. It may be other ships, or it may be islands, but a good pirate has to get into some epic battles. No matter what, there's always some common rules. The attacker rolls the red dice, and the defender rolls the black dice. Highest roll wins, and the attacker always wins a tie. Cannons increase a ship's roll, and skulls increase an island's roll, but we'll go into that in a minute. To be a great pirate, you not only need to control the sea, you also need to conquer the land. Controlling islands gives you extra resources each turn, and each island you control gives you one plunder point. You can only conquer resource islands, which have skulls on them. The more skulls, the stronger the island. To conquer an island, your ship has to be in the port. When you're ready to attack, roll the red attack dice. If the island is already controlled, the person who owns the island rolls the defense dice. If the island isn't controlled, then the person on your left rolls the defense dice for the island. Highest roll wins and ties go to the attacker. As the attacker, you add one to your roll for every cannon on your ship, and the island adds one for each skull. So let's say I attack this island. It's unowned, so I give the black defense dice to Peyton. And then I take the red attack dice and roll. So it's a tie, and it's still a tie because this island has one skull and I have one cannon. So that makes it three to three, and since I'm the attacker, I win the tie. Since I won, I conquered the island and put one of my flags on it. If the attacker loses, then they remove a life from the ship. If that's the last life for that ship, the ship sinks. If the island is owned and it sinks your ship, the owner of the island gets a plunder point card. The battle is now over, and this ship cannot attack this island again during this turn, but it can go attack another island, and another ship from your fleet can attack this island this turn. So let's say I attack this island and I lost. First I remove a life peg from my ship, and then if I had enough movement points, I could come to this island and attack it, or I could back out of the port and let this ship come and attack this island, since it's a different ship. You're a pirate, and as a pirate, you have to rid the sea of your enemies. You do this by attacking their ships. Pew, 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 pew. You do this by attacking their ships. To attack another ship, you have to be next to them. You cannot be diagonal and you cannot attack across a barrier island. Attacking a ship is similar to attacking an island. The attacker rolls the red dice, the defender rolls the black die. Higher roll wins, but each ship adds one to their roll for each cannon on their ship. Ties always go to the attacker. If the ship sinks, take it off the map, and the winner gets a plunder point card. So I'm gonna attack Jared here. So I get the red dice, and he gets the black dice. Do we both roll? I rolled a four, and he rolled a six. And I have two cannons, so it turns my four into a six. And he has one cannon, so it turns his six into a seven. So he wins, and I lose a life. When the battle is over, this ship cannot attack this ship again during this turn, but just like islands, it can go attack another ship, and another ship in his fleet can come attack this ship during this turn. 
Even the best pirates need things from other pirates sometimes. You have a few options. You can trade, you can flex your muscle and threaten other players, you can bribe other players, and you can make treaties. First, let's talk about trading. You can trade any resources. It's an open negotiation between the players involved, but there's a few rules about who can trade with who. You can trade with a player if you're in one of their ports, or if they're in one of your ports. You can trade with any player that is docked on a merchant island, and if you're docked on a merchant island, you can trade with anybody. You can also trade with a player if you're next to them at sea, but not diagonal, and you cannot trade across barrier islands. And if you're docked in a merchant island, you can trade in any two resources for one resource that you choose. Just discard your two resource cards and draw the one you want from the face-up piles. When you're in position to attack another ship, you can threaten them and demand resources, either for free or cheap, in exchange for not attacking them. You can threaten someone if you're docked at their island or next to one of their ships. So since I'm right here, I can threaten to attack Jared if he doesn't give me two gold cards. I can also threaten to attack Jared if I was right here, since he owns the island. If you're about to be attacked, you can bribe the other player to try to avoid a battle. The other player has to be in a position to attack you, so either next to you or docked at one of your islands. You can offer as many resources as you want. If they reject your offer, you can try again with a higher offer. If you agree to a trade, threat, or bribe, you're in a treaty for the rest of your turn, and you're bound to whatever you agree to. When you're in a treaty with another player, you can't attack any of their ships or islands, and you can't use a treasure card to impact that player. You can also get resources from treasure cards. You get treasure cards from these red X's. When you sail onto a red X, you draw a treasure card. If the X is on land, you just need to go to the space by the X. Most treasure cards give you gold and other rewards, but some cards can have a bad result. Simply read the card aloud in your best pirate voice and follow the instructions. So let me draw this top card. You find the greatest treasure of all, plus one plunder point. So I just draw a plunder point card. If you win resources, take them from the resource decks. If you lose resources, put them back in these decks. After you complete the treasure card, use the compass spinners to put the X back on the map and put the treasure card at the bottom of the treasure deck. You can continue hunting for treasure in the same turn. Now I need to talk about the storm. The storm moves around the seas, plaguing any pirates who cross its path. Anytime a one is rolled with the sailing die, the storm is immediately relocated using the compass spinners to place it. It costs two resources to go into and out of the storm. If you're in the storm and you don't have enough resources to get out, you're stuck until you either have enough resources or until the storm moves. If the storm covers a port, then you cannot trade at that port. You cannot collect an X, place a ship, or interact with other players across the storm's border. You can do all of that within the storm, just not across the border. If all of an island's ports are inside the storm, that island doesn't produce resources at the beginning of your turn. If you ever find yourself without a ship, you have a few options during your turn. At the start of your turn, collect resources like you normally would. If you don't have any islands or plunder point cards, you get to take one resource card of your choosing. Next, roll two dice. If you roll doubles, you get a new ship. If you don't roll doubles, you can use resources to build a ship, you can trade one plunder point card for a ship, you can trade five gold for a ship, or you can disown an island you own for a ship. Place your new ship with three lives in one of your ports. If you don't have any islands, spin the compass spinners to see where to put your ship. If you land on an island or on top of another ship, just pick a space next to it for your ship. Once your ship is placed, you can sail, trade, and attack just like normal. But if you don't get a new ship, you can try again your next turn. Remember, the first player to get to 10 plunder points conquers the high seas and wins the game. You can get one plunder point for each ship you command, each island you control, and each plunder point card you have. You can also get plunder point cards by sinking other players' ships, trading resources, or from treasure cards. If you're playing with two players, or you want to play on teams, there's instruction for both of those variants in the back of the instruction book. And that's plunder. If you have any questions, or if you have a game you want us to teach, leave us a comment. Thanks for watching. And be sure to subscribe right here, and watch our other videos over here. See you later. Bye. Bye.